Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sonny, and today I want to talk to you about HDMI splitters. If you're a content creator and you've got capture cards, devices in your setup that you need to duplicate the signal on, you can do that with those HDMI matrices I talked about in the last video. But if you're just looking for adding an extra signal coming out of a device in your setup and that's all you want to do, these can be really handy. I actually have one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually have six different HDMI splitters in my setup. Some of these all come with different features and some of those things might be something that you're looking for specifically. So I've gone through and I've tested a bunch of these splitters. So I went through and I tested the three most common splitters that I think people will end up trying to purchase. Some of these are incredibly inexpensive and some of these are a little bit more on the pricey side and some of them are a little bit in between. So let's get into it. I'll tell you what my findings were. So I also tested all of these with a time sleuth uh, input lag tester. This will tell me whether or not there's a very high input latency that's coming out when you use these devices. So the first one we want to discuss here is what I'm going to deem the garbage tier splitter. This thing is absolute garbage. Uh, it does work sometimes and as you can see it's just got an HDMI cord on one end and two HDMI inputs on this side. It does work sometimes, but most of the time in the circumstances where I've been trying to use it, one of the signals will end up kind of like with green little sparkles in the image or on the monitor. It just isn't quite there and sometimes I can get it to work. Sometimes one of the screens will be turning on for a second and then turning off. It's really inconsistent. I'm going to say you should just not use these. All right, so the garbage one is kind of out of the way. Just avoid it. I'm not even going to link it in the description. The ones that I do recommend will be linked in the description. And there are two that we are going to talk about that I'm going to recommend if you just need simple one input, two output splitting. All right, so now let's move on to the good splitter. This one's going to be kind of hard to see. This is the splitter that Rob from RetroRGB also talked about in one of his recent videos. I'll link that in the description if you guys want to see that video. There's uh, some discussion on HDMI matrices and splitters that were really good in that video. The really nice thing about this really inexpensive, just kind of black box, has, is that it's USB powered, which is really convenient. And it covers a lot of the features that I would expect out of a good HDMI splitter. This is another one of a video, a av, avd, avdo, I don't know how to say it, whatever it is. A video links. A video links. This is the same company that makes the HDMI matrix that I talked about in the last video. So it does 4K 60. No, it will not do 4K 120. It will display a signal if you set devices to variable refresh rate but it will cut in and out when the refresh rate moves too quickly so it does not support VRR it will support Dolby Vision so that's nice and it will do 1440 120 Hertz which is also very nice fixed not VRR it has no problem with the RetroTINK 5X at various settings even on frame lock one of the really nice things about this is that it will automatically downscale from 4K to 1080p if you have one of your monitors plugged in that doesn't support 4K. So it does have built-in downscaling, but you cannot toggle it. And there's no EDID settings to speak of for this. But it does remove HDCP, which means you can use the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. So now let's talk about this HDMI splitter. I have three of these in my setup, and I like these a lot. First of all, this one's kind of in a plastic shell. It's not really robust. It feels pretty inexpensive. It's discreet. I'll give it that. It's also pretty slim when you compare it to the 
Easy Co. Which is nice. But the Easy Co is in a nice metal housing. Uh, it feels like a much higher quality product. The Easy Co is also powered by a USB 5 volt. So same deal between these two. But it has a toggle for different modes and EDID emulation. It has 4K, 2K, and copy one. This will also do 4K to 1080p downscaling. Over here you'll notice that there's these two little dip switches here in the middle that you can toggle up and down. Those will allow you to turn the scaler on and off independently for the outputs, which is actually really nice. The last thing you need to know about this is that it does strip HDCP when you have it set to the 4K EDID emulation on the switch here. If you leave it on TV copy or you put it on 2K, HTCP remains intact and you're going to end up with a capture card that says please turn off HTCP for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. This one will work 4K 60, it will do Dolby Vision, it does 1440p 120 hertz just fine, it does all the retro tink resolutions I threw at it, even frame lock, and the input latency was the lowest of all of the devices. The time sleuth direct to my TV gave me 9.0 milliseconds of input latency, 1080p. These both were about 9.3. It's not a massive jump in input latency between these two. You won't even notice the difference. It's not even close to an entire frame. So between these two, I'd say they're both really good options. I like the EasyCo because of its build quality and the options that you can toggle manually. But to be honest, this one is a good option too. I would say get whatever one you want. If you're looking for an HDMI splitter, these are really good options. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.